Say that I wanted to make a plant grow as big as it possibly could. What are the things I can do to maximize that? Well, first off, I could give it enough water, enough sunlight, nutritious soil, but could I do anything past that to make it super grow, maybe? Can I just drown it in water? Can I just put some really high quality soil and shine LED lights on it 24 seven? Would that make it grow more? Probably not. And your body is exactly the same. If you want to maximize muscle growth, yes, you want to hit your protein requirements, you want to hit your calorie requirements, you want to make sure you have enough volume and enough intensity. But going past that, doing like 40, 50, 60 sets a week maybe, or eating 10,000 calories a day, eating 500 grams of protein, all of that stuff probably won't do that much to increase your gains past the maximum. So the point is, your body is not keeping up with you. You are keeping up with your body. As your body gets stronger, you will lift more weight to facilitate that adaptation. So for example, as a tree gets bigger, it probably needs more water, right? And as you get bigger, you probably need more food and therefore you'd increase your calories. But this doesn't mean that you can't optimize things, right? If the tree was only getting a tiny drop of water every day, it probably wouldn't grow much at all. And that's also the case for you. If you're not getting enough food, you probably won't grow. But once you're getting enough, going over that limit won't do you much benefit. And sometimes it can even cause harm. You might overtrain. And I've got a personal anecdote about this actually, because I got tendonitis. How did this happen? Well, I was in week three of my squat block and I was like, okay, I feel a little bit of discomfort, but I don't want to jeopardize my progress. If I skip a week, then maybe I'll have to, you know, reset and the peak won't go properly and I'll have to, oh, oh this is too much of a hassle. I'll just, I'll just push through with it. So I pushed through with it. So I did my normal squats and front squats and box squats and I was getting to leg extensions and Leg extensions are very quad focused, right? So you really feel your knees. And I'm like, oh, there's, there's quite a bit of discomfort. So set one, I got through my normal num number of reps. Set two, it's a little bit more pain. And I can't get as many reps, but you know, it's still there. I'm still within the range. I'm supposed to do 10 to 12. So maybe in the first set I did 12, but in the second set I couldn't get, I could only get 10. By the time I got to the third set, the pain had got increasingly worse and worse. And by set four, I generally could not push anymore because the pain was so bad. And what did that lead to? Two months off squatting completely because that's how much it took to recover my knee tendon. Was it worth it? Well, right now I'm on the other end of the recovery and I have basically recovered about 95%. And I can definitely say that was not worth it. It was much better to just take a week off there and take a step back and let myself recover. If I had done that, then I'd have saved time. But now because I didn't do that, I missed out on two months instead of just one week. The most important thing is that it's better to undershoot than overshoot. If you're overshooting, you're probably messing up your stress recovery adaptation cycles. This is how we gain muscle or grow or get stronger. You will apply a certain amount of stress to your body and your body will recover and it will do a little bit more, more than recovering. So if I break down my muscle or put a certain amount of mechanical tension on my muscle, your body will adapt to make sure that that stress doesn't cause a problem in the future. So you get stronger. But the thing is, the more stress that you put on your body, obviously the more time and resources are going to take to build back stronger. So if you're just increasingly putting more and more and more and more stress in such a way that your body can't keep up with the recovery, you're probably going to find that you decrease in skill, decrease in strength and increase in fatigue, which isn't a good thing. And this probably could lead to injuries, much like my tendon. So when you're training, it's always good to keep a tab on your minimum effective volume and maximum recoverable volume. What do these terms mean? Well, your minimum effective volume is the least amount of sets you can do per week or per session or per block, whatever it is, to initiate a response from your body. And your maximum recoverable volume is the most amount of work that you can handle without 
regressing. So keeping tabs on both of these metrics will help you to stay in the middle of a safe range. Go above this and you'll be overtraining, go below this and you'll be undertraining and probably not making any progress. Both of these extremes are not very good. So you want to treat yourself like you would a house plan. You want to make sure that you give yourself enough protein, enough recovery, enough sleep, enough volume, enough intensity to grow, but you don't want to go past that. Because even with a tree, if you put too much water in it, it's probably not very good for it. And obviously the same is with your body. You need to be in the middle of this range. And just to finish off, I'd like to leave you with this thought. You will probably overestimate what you can do in a year, but you will probably also underestimate what you can do in 10, 20, even maybe 30 years. So remember, we're in this iron game for the long term. We're trying to make sure that we keep on going day in, day out, keeping longevity first, because the people who last the longest will probably make the most progress for their genetics, right? If you want to maximize your genetic potential, you want to stay injury free for as long as possible. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy it, leave a like. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and let me know any, any questions that you have, uh, any future video ideas, please do let me know down below in the comments. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. See ya.